September 19th, the servant of God, Mary Teresa Dudzik, Virgin Third Order. Josephine Dudzik was 18 years old when she came from Poland to Chicago with her parents and settled near St. Stanislaus Kostka's church in 1878. During an economic crisis in 1894, Josephine opened her home to the poor, the homeless, the aged, and the sick. Since she could not care for them alone, she invited some friends to help her in the, her self-imposed task. Thus she became the foundress of the first community of religious women to be established in Chicago, the Franciscan Sisters of Blessed Cunagunda, now called the Franciscan Sisters of Chicago. In 1897, Josephine, who now had the name Mother Mary Teresa, opened a home for the aged at Hamlin and Schubert Streets, and in 1901, the new sisterhood also undertook the work of education in the parish of St. Stanislaus Bishop and Martyr on the north side. Soon, other schools and institutions in Chicago were staffed by the sisters, and in the course of time, they were able to extend their charitable and educational activities also to other dioceses. Their mother house is Our Lady of Victory Convent in Lement, Illinois. Mother Mary Teresa died in 1918. Their, the first steps toward her beatification and canonization were taken when her mortal remains were exhumed at St. Aldebert's Cemetery, Niles, Illinois on October 13, 1972. They were then placed in a sealed double casket of metal and wood and placed in a granite sarcophagus in a niche of the chapel of the Mother House in Lamont. As stated in the new directives from the Vatican, the canonization of Mother Mary Teresa could take place in Chicago's Cathedral of the Holy Name instead of the Vatican Basilica of St. Peter's. on preferments. Consider how the saints fled from positions of honor, just as the servant of God, Saint Teresa, did. When, however, they were obliged to accept them, they labored at their post with great success. The true servants of God always act in this manner. They fly from honorable positions because, in their humility, they regard themselves unworthy of honor while they fear the responsibility associated with such offices. When they must accept them, however, they endeavor to fulfill conscientiously their duties. And so the blessing of God, which is always given to the humble, is with them. Have you always thought of honorable positions in this light? Consider that whoever follows the promptings of nature desires preferment, for it is in accord with human nature to covet distinction over other holy men and to wish to govern others. Before the coming of the Holy Ghost, even Christ's disciples quarreled among themselves as to who among them should be their leader after our Lord's departure. Everybody engaged in worldly pursuits seeks honors, and everybody believes himself capable of discharging the duties of a superior. But since God resists the proud, his help is withdrawn from the ambitious once they secure a position of honor. And so it often happens that they reap disgrace in their preferments, while duty unfulfilled increases their deficit for eternity. Have you exposed yourself to such danger at any time? Consider that while some people are not anxious to have honorable positions for themselves, they are quite set on obtaining them for their children. Like the mother of the sons of Zebedee, they would like to see their sons in places of honor and their daughters educated for social position far above their own. Were our Lord to speak to such parents, he would likewise say to them, you do not know what you desire. Such parents believe that they are promoting the happiness of their children. But how often does such vanity plunge the children and even the parents into the greatest misfortune? 
Pray God that he may never permit you to be deceived by such foolish ambition. Prayer of the Church. O God, who withstandest the proud and givest thy grace to the humble, endow us with that true virtue of humility, the pattern of which thine only begotten Son showed in himself to the faithful. Nor may we ever be, nor may we ever by our pride provoke thee to anger, but rather in our lowliness accept from thy hands the gifts of thy grace. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen.